How's it going guys? Trick Trick here. Um, today I will be making a full-on guide on fire mages and well you know mages in general in, in New World. Uh, there, there's a bunch of guides out there many many guides uh, especially one recently made by, by Saryu a beautiful and amazing guide I will link that one below if you're new to mage it, it, you know even if you're a veteran mage I would recommend you go and see it because he has a lot of insight uh, you know about about the mage class um, well let's uh, let's jump right into what well, before I start I want to I want to say that um, this is the first video that you know the first guy that I ever made and um, before I did this I, I went out there and I watched some guides because I, I didn't want to I didn't want to to repeat myself to not repeat myself but repeat what the what the other content creators uh, what they already did and I didn't want to sound silly you know saying the same things uh, over again but I, I watch I watched some of them and, and especially the the Sario one and um, no, not that mine is better or, or anything like that. Uh, it's just that it's more information, right? Uh, uh, the more information, the better. And uh, I, I, ha I would like to add some more things, uh, a different point of view, a different perspective from, you know, from another uh, mage brother uh, like myself, that that is the only class I, I've played since, since the beginning of New World. And it's been over a thousand hours, uh, well past that point already that I haven't touched any other class that is the, the, the mage in, in your world. Uh, we're going to jump uh, straight up into the, um, the, the talent trees. Um, mine, it's, it's a little, it, may, it might be a little different than, than some of the other ones that you see, but it's because my build is focused on a all around type of environment. I, I do a lot of wars, I do a lot of OPRs, I, I do a lot of open world, and I do a lot of uh, 1v1 duels. And uh, I haven't had the need to constantly have to change uh, talents, you know, uh, back and forth, because with, with this build that I have, uh, it, it pretty much covers it all. And I, 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 you know, I will go more into details as, as the video goes on uh, how especially uh, that will work. Uh, first, we're gonna jump in uh, with Pillar of Fire. This is uh, basically your main fire damage dealer in uh, uh, big AOE scenarios, right? It used to be Fireball because of that big crit, but since it does, it, it, it no longer crits, then uh, mages had to find a new way to do uh, great damage. And Pillar of Fire got buff. It went from like 140% or something like that to 170%, which it, it made it great. Uh, second, we have Pillar of Fire deals 40% uh, damage to, to foes at full health. Uh, this will barely happen. Uh, this most, it will happen most of the time in PvE, actually, rather than PvP. Uh, but when it happens, it happens. So, and sometimes you can really do great, crazy damage to, to a very squishy class. So, uh, you know, I, I'm going for the last, uh, the last talent here, so I have to get that one mandatory, but it's good. And um, this one, uh, some, of the, some of the other fire mages, they don't take it because it's not good for 1v1, and I, and I get it. Uh, but like I said, I have all the ways to, to cover myself on a 1v1 scenario. Therefore, I can put a, a point on this, and it makes it amazing, guys. It makes it that you never, ever run out of mana because Pillar of Fire, it's, it's, it's a 15 mana, you know, uh, ability. And with my bill, you're gonna use it back to back, back to back, nonstop ever. And if you don't have, if you don't have this uh, uh, talent here, you will run out of mana immediately. So you 100% need this talent. Uh, then obviously we're gonna need spell focus that, that makes your heavy attacks uh, uh, restore 5% of your mana, and uh, the other one, fear restoration, it makes your 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 heavy attacks uh, give you 10% 10, 10 cooldown reduction on hit. That is huge, guys. That is really big. Those two synergize very well together, and it will synergize with another one down here once we get there. Uh, we have Clear Mind while holding a Fire Stab about 50% mana. You gain 5% damage. Going back to this ability, which it will help you stay above that 50% mana uh, you know, threshold, so you never run out of that little buff that you have there. Uh, next, we're gonna jump into the Fireball. We all know, we all know what Fireball do. You know, you just throw it there. <laughs> it deals damage. It's a really nice explosion radius. It's a, uh, and it leaves a burning feel. Um, never try to you, you know do direct hit with Fireball. I never recommend it. 
uh, because most of the times you're gonna miss. <laughs> like eight, eight out of 10, you know, you're gonna miss and, and then you won't deal damage. That's why the most effective way to use Fireball is to actually use it on the target's feet or where they're going to be running towards on the ground in front of them. Uh, so the explosion is what deal damage to them and not the Fireball itself. Uh, then I have a Scorch Earth, Fireball Burning last nine, uh, nine seconds. Uh, again, in a 1v1 scenario, that will almost never work because people would just walk out of the, the burning. Uh, but since I do a lot of wars and a lot of OPRs, uh, having this burning field last 9 seconds, it's very good for me because I have a lot of cooldown reduction. And having a lot of cooldown reduction, it makes me have Fireball way quicker than that ninth second of of the scorch floor direction therefore i can have several floor i can cover a bigger area uh, uh with that burning floor it doesn't deal much damage but still it takes for you know about 90 to 150 uh so it's good damage that's why i get it. that's why i get this one i don't get the last one because once again i like i said i think that red hit with a fireball it's extremely hard to do and half the time if you even get a direct hit most likely the fireball will go through the target so it's not gonna work uh then down here we're gonna jump after taking no damage you know for three seconds uh, you deal five percent more damage as a mage as a range class you 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 would try to stay away from damage you know damage is inevitable you, you're gonna get damage uh, uh every once in a while but if you keep in your distance and you play in your hiding game and your mobility game and you're staying out of harm's way uh, and you know, it's only three seconds. You gotta last it's five percent damage It's not that big, but it's not that bad either now We're getting into these three these three are really freaking good here. We got that your fire staff uh, uh, Ability is getting an extra 10% chance to crit. This is big. Uh, it used to be 15% But then they took it down to 10. That's that's great guys. Uh, this is just free critical chance, right? Uh, why wouldn't you take that? Uh, then we have here that while holding a fire staff your critical strike damage increased by 15% Again, it used to be, I think, 20%. It, it, it's now down to 15, but still great because that will increase your overall damage. Uh, as a fire mage, you will be doing a lot of crits. So this is this is really, really good. Uh, then we have heavy attacks, no longer consume mana. This, again, going back to these two over here, these three synergize very, very well together. Now, going back to the last uh, of the abilities here on this talent tree, we have Rune of Helios. And, uh, you know, when you use your fire staff ability, you drop that rune that is a two meter rune on the ground. And while you're on top of it, you, you will deal 25% more damage, right? Now, this, work, this works great because it won't only increase the damage for your abilities, but it will also increase the damage for your basic attacks. And guys, this thing makes you kill people like crazy. Like people sometimes don't see like a heavy attack hit them for like 3.5, 4k damage because you're standing on that rune, you know, and you do your dodge and you 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 send that heavy attack and, and you hit them for 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 a shit ton. This it's great, you know, it will increase your damage overall, so it's a no-brainer why not to take it. Plus, this other one right here is not very good, right? Um and that's it that makes it uh, oh one thing i, I think uh, i'm not sure about this but i think that if you stand on a friendly rune of helios it will also increase the damage uh for you you know as a mage I, i'm not 100 percent sure about that but uh, i heard something and i and i think it, it works uh then we jump into the the pyromancer bill uh, while holding a fire staff and below 50 percent max health you deal 15 percent more damage uh, this is good, uh, definitely way better than the flamethrower, right? Uh, this is good. Um, I don't recommend being uh, below 50% of your max health just to, in to get the you know the 50% increased damage, but it's gonna happen. Uh, and a lot of hap a lot of times uh, you're gonna get below that 50% and having at least you know that 50% damage there is not that bad. Um, so. Uh, the the reason the reason you know I'm, I'm choosing these abilities here is because we need to make it down here to burnout. Burnout it's the only skate you know that a mage has. Without it, we are dead meat. We're sitting duck, and we're gonna get killed so easily as as a mage. 
uh let it burn it, it's great this uh this ability will give you that 10 percent 45 for two seconds as long as the enemy is burning so if uh if you hit him with you know if you crit him with with your with one of your abilities you're gonna leave that dot for six for six seconds if you hit him with burnout you're gonna leave that dot also for for eight seconds and uh you know having 200 and uh, is it 200 intellect that i think that it makes it that your dots uh, last uh, a lot longer it makes you have that 45 all almost all the time up as long as you you know you're consistently doing damage so this is great this is amazing it helps you you know be a little bit tankier because we really really need it uh then we have burnout you know it's 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 the dash through the enemies uh one thing i would like to to say before burnout uh the people using you know people wearing shields and if you hit a target that was blocking with burnout you will get stunned well that no longer is a thing now you can go through the targets even if they're blocking i don't know if, if that's an issue that should be fixed all i'm saying is as it stands right now burnout can go through any target even if they're wearing a shield or not and it will not stun you um fire staff cooldowns are reduced by uh by five seconds for each foe you hit by burnout this is good it's you know you're not gonna be using it all the time uh to to go into you know in, in, to go in as a with burnout and do damage uh you will save burnout to get a, a sticky situation uh nine out of ten times that's what you will use it for you know when they get in too close to you and you will get you want to get out of there and um also uh, it helps sometimes, you know, finish up those targets that are trying to run away. And, and that's why you definitely need Burnout to go 50% further. If you don't have this, there's a lot of weapons out there like Great Hammers and Great Axe that if you don't get far enough from them, they're going to immediately get close to you with either Path of Destiny or, or gra uh, Gravity Well or the Charge. So, shit, Reap, it's it's as long as, uh, as uh, Burnout without, without the increase, you know, uh, of distance. Uh, and last but not least, we have this one that I, I, I went over a, a little bit already. Um, your fire staff um, crit, they deal, you know, they, they leave that dot. It used to be on this side and it used to be that every crit will leave the dot, but then they remove that every crit, uh, every crit will, would apply the dot. Now only uh, fire staff ability. And that kind of sucks because in reality, the only two fire abilities that I can crit you know from this build right here it will be pillar of fire and burnout your bread and butter of fireball no longer crit so kind of like a bummer uh that it no longer applies that applies that uh that dot now we're gonna move into the ice gauntlet and this is why i was saying that i focus on on a aoe you know build with my fire staff with because my ice gauntlet this is my 1v1 guy you know this is the the weapon that i use to 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 if okay you want to find me come let's do it let's 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 take care of business plus as we stand right now mages ice gauntlet is the only weapon that can kill healers with one shot not only healers about any other dps that you're fighting but the, the reason i'm bringing up healers is because dps we can kill a missile right we can we can beat almost every dps uh uh but healers it's it's really hard for you to beat a healer as a mage especially on a 1v1 it's you know previously it was like there's no way that you can ever beat a healer especially if he's wearing medium or heavy armor well uh, guys that, that's a dream that's an old dream now you can one shot those healers you can one shot anybody that it's wearing medium to light armor no questions no questions whatsoever and that's where ice spike comes in um ice spikes as we know you know it's it, it will traverse through the ground and then the big spike will come into uh, you know at the end but one thing that a lot of people don't know is that if you if you press left click at any given time before the ice spike reaches its you know its final destination you will for you will force the final spike to come up on that place and and no, no so it's that way you can heal targets that are close to you right um cooldown for this ability is reduced by 10 percent when you hit an enemy by you know with uh, uh the, the spikes which is great uh that, that that's very useful uh then mighty spike deals increase 20 percent damage when hitting when hitting enemies below 30 percent it's also good you know it's it helps you you know finish those people uh then increase damage by 10 percent and add stagger to the path of, uh, of spike this is good this is really really good because with this one if you have somebody like very close to you and you just use ice spike to you know to give him the stagger pack it works great that way you stagger you can get away with uh, get away from them 
or you can stagger and use a, a you know a shower or anything that you want it also works with uh, fire mages burnout if you see a fire mage that is about to use his burnout and come you know uh, 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 you know through you and either you don't have a shower or you don't want to dodge because you can always dodge but if you have the ice gauntlet out you can hit them with the ice spike as they you know come in at you and they will get staggered and stun in front of you just as they used to get stunned with a shield and here down here it's where this ability becomes very very deadly spiky reach makes it that um at the end of the spike right it, it shoots those two um the the two shards on the sides and they have a wider range and they deal well 118 percent uh, damage this is amazing guys because when you use the ice spike right do you see well well you didn't see anything because of, because of the stairs here let me use it here when you use ice spike right you see at the end they, they were like two orbs that shoot out of the, the final spike well those two orbs they are meant to do damage you know to people that are on either side of the of the ice spike but what happened is when you hit a target with a direct hit those two orbs that are coming on the side they're also adding to the damage so you're hitting a target potentially four times you hit him with the trajectory of the ice spikes then the big spike at the end plus the two orb on the side and guys with this you do anything if you crit right you do anything from 4k to 7.5 thousand and really one shot anybody that is medium to light gear and the good thing about it is at the end you follow it up with a light attack that will 900 percent always hit the target because as you hit them with the ice spike right they get that stagger and then you hit them with a basic attack a really quick light attack and if your ice spike doesn't finish them it will leave them about 10 to 5 percent of the hp and that light attack will kill them i will show you guys some clips later on on, on how that works and how it's done and it works wonder you you never have to worry about those healers anymore you'll be able to one shot them with ice spike no problem at all guys then we're gonna get here that 15 percent mana uh, uh whenever you crit uh, a target the reason i didn't go with cold reach is because i mean this is great but the reason i didn't go with it is because i didn't use my ice gauntlet as a ranged weapon right i only use my ice gauntlet when those people are coming to me on a 1v1 and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna fight you. And most of the time, they're not further than 15 meters. And if they're further than 15 meters, the only thing that I will use is it, probably Ice Storm and go ahead and switch back to my uh, to my Fire Staff, correct? Um, then, so that's why I'm using, you know, this one instead of this one. Um, Ice Storm, you have to go with that one. It's by far... Ice Storm is by far the best AoE ability in the game, just for the simple fact that the more targets that are inside of the storm, the more damage that storm will do. Um, so this is great. You can you can freeze people in there. You can hit them with your heavy freeze. Ice Storm, it's such a great ability on a such a low low cooldown. Um, incoming damage is increased by 10% uh, for three seconds to enemies inside of the Ice Storm. Uh, and while they're below 50%, this is great. Uh, I mean, it's 10% damage. But the thing is that it's not just your damage. It's any damage given to those enemies that are below 50% while they're below, you know, uh, while they're inside of the storm. So it's any damage received, not just the damage you do to them. Uh, here we have Ice Storm mana cost is decreased by 80% while you're full of mana. It will happen. It will happen sometimes. You will use it. It's not as reliable as you will want it to be, but it's something that we need to get to make it to the last ability because this one is what makes. Uh, the storm such a such a strong ability right um, here we have uh, increased critical chance by 15% when hitting an enemy an enemy that is in a, a frosted area or when hitting hitting an enemy with frostbite uh, your ice storm will cause the enemy to to be slow and have frostbite and your ice shower will cause enemy to to be slowed and have frostbite uh, so this one it's 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 great you, you should get this one because come on it's just free critical, critical, critical chance when the target is frozen and you're using the ice gauntlet, which is gonna be most of the time if uh, you're fighting someone with the ice gauntlet. Heavy freeze, we all know what this one is, and we all know what it used to be as well. Uh, this one used to have no cooldown, then they gave it a cooldown, but still, it's so reliable. It is extremely reliable and an ability because it makes everything possible. It makes you being able to one shot anybody. 
because of this heavy freeze and I'll, and I will show you guys into detail how is it that heavy freeze makes the whole build be able to work even though after the huge nerf um, ultimate shield we need to get this one it's 25% increased damage for you know for anybody that is inside of the storm anybody that is frozen they will get 25% uh, increased uh, damage that you, that you will deal you know to them so this one is a no-brainer we're gonna take them as soon as you put on that thing as soon as you put on this thing that 25% uh, damage will go into effect immediately uh, another ability that I, I love and I need uh, you know as a nice mage is ice shower this one got recently nerfed, you know, it got the, the cooldown went from 20 seconds to 50 uh, to 30 seconds, uh, which was a huge nerf, but it's still such a good ability that it's a must have if you're playing uh, Ice Mage. Uh, I like to take this one uh, instead of this one because um, I don't do much of running, right? While in a frozen area, it just doesn't happen. You, you, really, you really aren't walking on top of a frozen area that much. And uh, blocking an attack with Ice Gauntlet will convert uh, uh, mana into stamina. I do block a lot, especially if you have an Ice Gauntlet. And, and, and you know, a Void Gauntlet comes in, screams on your face, pull, pulls out the Void Blade. And at that point, what are you going to do? Well, you have two choices. Either eat the damage or block with the Ice Gauntlet. And, 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 and man, does it block good. You will mitigate a lot of damage. It, it is an exceptional ability. Uh, if you haven't never tried this, I recommend it. Go ahead and try, give it a try, and you'll see how good it is. Then we have Ice Shower. We, we all know what it is. You know, you put the shower in front of you. You know, it, it, frits, it, it roots anybody in there. And then uh, I increase the shower duration uh, to 7 seconds, which is great. Uh, the, the longer it stays, the more you can hide behind it and do your thing. Uh, then any ally, including self, that goes through the shower, they get 25% movement speed for 2 seconds. This is amazing. Uh, you can keep on getting it as long as you go back and forth uh, And any any of your allies can also get it and then he has here the ren that we all want right when we push that uh, We put the, the ice shower down. It gives that 10% uh, Ren that is really good. It well, it's the only ren as a, as a mage that we really have and then casting a nice gauntlet ability creates a you know a 45 a 20 percent 45 for two seconds it has no cooldown and like i said i'm fighting most of the times i'm fighting somebody uh you know on a 1v1 melee scenario with me with my eyes gauntlet so having that 45 every time you use an ability is great uh it, it will be basically up most of the time uh well that that does it for for you know for for the skill trees uh let's move now into the perks um let's jump into the weapons first uh i think for the weapons uh, especially uh, you know as a fire mage having cannon vicious it's 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 mandatory on the weapon at least for my build uh remember this is my build this is the way that i play mage there's gonna be different builds out there like sario's build is more focused into a 1v1 uh, this build that i have here it's a more overall build uh so it, it's my way, my interpretation of how, you know, I play this class and how I've been shining on my server. Um, but because of the Fire Mage has, you know, has a 10% crit chance over here and 15% crit damage. Why, why not, you know, make that stronger? Let, let's go with it. And um, <clears throat> so that's why I, I think a Fire Staff with Kin and Vicious, it is the go-to staff uh, to do raw damage. It's going to be up there. It's... It doesn't provide anything better than just having a, a, a full intellect staff with Kin and Vicious. Um, the only the only other ability that I will see that will replace uh, uh, Vicious will be play play crit, but that will be more that will be more into the war spectrum when you have a bunch of people sitting on a healing circle and a lot of them are gonna be below 50% health, and that's when it, it, you know if you're a mage and you do a lot of wars. You want to have a, a fire staff like this one that has, you know, King and Plague Strike. So you can all, all the times mitigate those heals that the enemy is receiving while they're clumping up on those points. So, uh, but King and Vicious, it, it will be great for PvE, PvP, open world. That that one, it's your, your best for all kinds of scenarios. Uh, then, um, moving into the Ice Gauntlet. Um... Probably Kin will be exceptional and uh, enchanted. Those two uh, are up there. They're S tier, and uh, some people like refreshing move. 
Now, my favorite by far of all of the Ice Gauntlet perks is Unending Thaw. Guys, that is so freaking strong and you have no idea how strong that is and how much does it help me get those kills uh, that I need. Because it makes it that enemies that leave the, the, the ice storm, right? The ice storm that you put down, which it will happen most of the time. It will happen 9 out of 10 times that the enemy, as soon as you put on the, the ice storm on it, they're going to roll out, especially if they had light gear, and they're going to get out of there really quickly. So what this do is that whenever they get out of that area, for the next two seconds, I can still land those shots. You know, I can still try to get them, get them frozen in place so I can go ahead and, and, and do my combo and, and do the other things that I want to do. So for me, on ending thought is the best, guys. I'm 100% the best perk for Ice Gauntlet just because it gives you two extra seconds. And in war, that is freaking huge. You know, you put that thor the, the storm down, even after the storm is over for the next two seconds, everybody's still slow. And, and even if they leave the storm for, for the next two seconds, they still slow. You can freeze them. You can still, you know, crit them for the extra 50% uh, crit chance. Uh, so that's why I think that is so great. Besides that one, like I said before, either Kin, Enchanted, or Refreshing Move, any of those, depending on your play style, uh, any, of them, any of those uh, will, be, will be good for you. Um, going to, going to, the, uh, to the armor here. Um, I will recommend two ability perks above everything else. Once you have those two ability perks, then you can go ahead and start stacking either your resilient or your refreshing or whatever the hell you want to stack. But as a mage, especially as a fire mage, if you don't have empower and fireball, you're missing a lot of damage, man. That's 31% additional damage from that fireball. That is huge. That is big, big damage and it's just for free. It's right there. Just put it on um and and you will have all that free damage the second perk that i want to talk about that it makes this whole build possible and it makes i think makes fire mages have the highest damage in the entire game i think some of you uh, already know what i'm gonna go ahead and talk about and that's gonna be refreshing pillar of fire reducing the ability cooldown by 14 seconds per enemy hit maximum three targets guys if you are stacking cooldown reduction like me and you hit two targets or three targets with pillar of fires the cooldown will be immediately refreshed if not 95 percent refresh so you can go ahead and, and hit those refresh uh, those pillar of fires back to back back to back back to back and it's just the highest damage output in the entire game no healer it's able to overheal that and no uh you know no uh dps it will be able to take that much damage and um and, and this goes back to having you know this ability because if i don't have this thing that gives me mana back every time that i hit an enemy with pillar of fire i will run out of mana in like two seconds because you know i'm, I'm constantly hitting and I, again i'm gonna show you guys some clips as well of how that perk makes everything possible and it makes it puts the fire mage very well above any other dps dealer just because of refreshing pillar of fire uh then uh, since we have those two abilities you know a uh, uh, perk uh, out of the way uh i would I'll, I'll, I'll let me talk about the other ones the one that i stack and those are refreshing uh as a mage yeah a lot of people were like why don't you go resilient you know instead of refreshing um resilient is great and if you can have resilient in any of your pieces you know uh or refreshing uh it's good some people go more towards resilient so people go more towards refreshing i've been trying to tell every single person in this server guys go refreshing it's amazing refreshing is really really good why because we as mages and some other classes like you know the healers we are ability classes and if we don't use those abilities we you know we're, we're basically doing anything just filling in with with basic attack or heavy attacks whatever whatever it might be but um me as a fire mage myself as a mage in general uh, refreshing not only reduces the cooldown of my fire abilities, but it also reduces the cooldown of my ice abilities. And you know how you play ice and fire in wall that uh, uh, you you most of the time using your fire staff, and whenever your blister it's ready, you will switch to the blister, you will put it down, do that crazy damage, switch back to your fire staff, and keep on doing damage, right? So the more cooldown reduction you have, the more often you're gonna be able to be putting down those blizzards and, and keep on doing that crazy damage that mages do, right? So that's why, uh, as you see, 
it, my helmet has resilient that's how it came out with uh, also if you don't have uh, a very good gear like uh, well, my gear is not very good at all but if you don't have a crafted gear and 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 you're deciding to go and buy the 520 from the faction vendor um, that gear is really good although I would prefer with the, how the, the game currently is I would prefer that you please make your gear first and and go from there and what I'm saying with that is with a shard implementation to the game uh, making gear it's now easier than ever if you have a friend that is 200 armoring or if you know people are providing the armoring services all the time in all chat uh, 595 to 600 so if f with less than 10 10,000 gold you can have all five pieces that you want to be craft you know with at least one perk that you want and and one attribute that you want because of the shards right and guys you can have a full set of 595 to 600 and get a potential 600 you know uh if you're lucky uh with already one perk that you want and all of that is going to be for less than 10,000 gold if you go to the faction vendor and you buy all of the 520 that's still it's a lot of money and i mean don't get me wrong it's it's a great gear but the other thing that that gear has it that is it only has 20 stats I, I think that is what it has so you're missing out in a lot of stats. you're missing out on uh what is it if you do five on each that is 25 stats that you're missing out right there you really don't want to miss on 25 stats because stats you know attributes is po possibly one of the most important uh things in the game um so now that we we went past that you know how to how to get your gear uh let's go back to to the perks that i was talking about so if you get resilient and and the other thing that you were gunning for by all means you know that is right there a beast piece um as you can see some of them weren't uh, as good for me like this one got invigorated but i still rocking that refreshing right there for the helmet, I threw in power and fireball because that's what I wanted. That's the perk that I wanted. And anything that will come on the side of that, it was welcome. In this case, it was resilient. So I, I was very happy with that. Uh, here, I went with a refreshing because, again, I'm going with cooldown reduction. Uh, for this one, I went with a refreshing pillar of fire. And the resilient also jumped in there, you know, as I crafted it. So I was very happy with that one as well. So at this point, I have two pieces with resilient. So I'm like, all right. I need I need to push on this uh, refreshing this cooldown reduction because that's the build that I that I use that's the build that I like to play, so that's why uh, my uh, my pants here as you can see they have refreshing and my boots they also have refreshing and then we're gonna jump into my accessories here which it has refreshing and divine uh, here if you would have refreshing and health that would also be good because you know that extra nine percent health it's like an extra thousand health sario said that and i i say that it's a hundred percent true and it's free a thousand percent a thousand health that, that you just get it's a no-brainer if you don't get that and you're stuck like me with divine well do not fear divine it's a wonderful ability not only you receive more healing from all of the other sources like healer and stuff but also your potions if you are a solo player and you pop in those potions i use those potions like crazy and it makes a difference because it increases the health that those potions give you and it also increases the health of the foods that you eat so divine it's a pretty darn good perk if you couldn't good if you couldn't get health divine is the second one that will be right there in my case refreshing is what i'm going for so that's why i have the refreshing there and divine well is what i got stuck with next on the ring king awareness this is extremely good going back with fire mages need a lot of crit right we have 15 percent from our talents then we have 11 percent from our weapon and then an extra 11 percent from our from our ring that that is a lot of crit rate right that is as close as max crit rate as you can get so having crit on your on your ring it's 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 mandatory i will say it is mandatory because it's the only other piece besides weapon that you can have crit chance in the entire game uh so you need that crit awareness in you know the king awareness in 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 your ring and in my case like i said before refreshing it's my way to go uh and then here on my my earring it's not the best i was gunning for that refreshing and this is the best thing that i can get uh eventually i will you know i will make this one a little better but until we get there 
uh, this is what I'll be uh, gunning with. Uh, the next thing uh, that the next thing that I'm gonna talk about now is the gems. Uh, and again, this is also very controversial, and it's it's how you play. This is your play style. Uh, the very first thing that I'm gonna jump again is into the weapons. I think having uh, Gambit, which is uh, man, which which uh, which stun was that one? Well, I forgot which one was it, but whenever you deal 15% damage when you're not full stamina and and this must be like 100% of the time so if you, if you play mage correctly right and and you're using your abilities you shouldn't you shouldn't be full mana you should have not mana you should have that stamina always less than 100% but above zero you never want to get it to zero because if you get it to zero not only you will move 10% slower but you also cannot block so i never recommend going to zero but I also never recommend being on 100% stamina because then you don't get that 15% increased increased damage, and uh, it's big. It's it's 15% increased damage basically for you just dodging around and not being full stamina. So I think that is the best gem for fire staff. Then we're gonna jump into this one, the cruel. That is 12% uh, damage whenever a target it's on crowd control, which it works with every single one of your ice staff ab uh, ice gauntlet ability, right? The moment that you put the storm on top of the enemies, this is gonna go into effect. The 12% is gonna go into effect. The moment you use the the, the the ice shower, this will go into effect. So basically, any time that you're hitting an enemy with an ice gauntlet, that it's not just auto attack, you know. Uh, basically, you will be doing that 12% free that's that's just a also a no-brainer and that should be the gem that you go uh for for your eyes gauntlet uh going here into the armor uh i went full onyx the reason i went full onyx is like i said we all have different play styles right we all have our rock papers and scissors uh in my case i don't struggle with magic damage as much i feel and also in my server there are not that many mages um most of the people are either physical damage or, or or you know the the archer types which is also physical and in my personal play style the, the class that i struggle the most it is archers and archers being physical damage i really really uh hated them and I, and i was struggling so i needed as much physical protection as i <clears throat> as i possibly could and that's why i went full onyx on my full gear i wouldn't recommend going uh a specific uh thing protection like all oh, you know the, the spears now everybody's using spears so i'm gonna go pierce protection don't do that because you're gonna fight people that have great axe and you're gonna fight people that have uh, great hammer so going physical protection or magical protection it is the way to go or a mix in between uh just don't go into the very specific elements or the very specific types of damage if you struggle against mages and against magical damage then you should change this to uh, uh, to the to, to you know to the the magical resistance uh, for the earrings. I have a combination of both, uh, you know, for my accessories here. But that's because it's what I could uh, what I could get my hands on. I'm glad that these two down here, you know, this one and this one, at least they have the diamond. So I got a little physical and elemental protection from there. Um, that does it. That that does it for the gems. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was, um, I think the type of gear, uh, you know, we all play different styles. We, we, some of us like to be light. Some of us like to be medium. Some of us like to be heavy. I used to play heavy for the longest time until I realized how good medium was. Um, the combinations are endless. Uh, basically if you put a bunch of heavy stuff, you're going to get them heavy. But if you want to get in the, you know, into the medium and light, there are several combinations. I'm going to put a link below. Uh, of all of the combinations that you can do with armor and in my personal preference I think heavy medium it is the way to go and the reason I'm saying it is the way to go is because having 200 intellect will give you mana back right and you know being medium you get to have more hops and that than anybody uh, in, in, in you know in a faster uh, sequence uh, so that's why I think that heavy medium not only gives you the best mobility but it also gives you the best serve ability uh, in terms of uh, PvP and PvE, uh, some people like to go light because of the extra damage. But uh, the hop, I, I feel very confident with the hop. I think the hop is it's the best mobility uh, uh, dash. Well, I wouldn't say the best mobility. The best mobility is by far maybe light. 
but my play style i feel like medium it gets me out of the situations rather easier than than light does i, I use it more to dodge abilities rather than to than to to you know to to grab distance so that's why i think medium it fits my play style um let's see i, I think um yeah that's it that's it with the gear let's talk about the stats uh the combinations here are also you know you you can you can do whatever you want uh what works for me and by far my favorite is uh 50 300 150 uh how you get there well you get there having almost uh full max gear right um i'm, I'm barely there i'm almost making it there i think i'm six uh stats short um uh, i just got a new piece and that's why this is on two, uh, 302 uh but this should be i'm gonna move this one below now and um i use a very a i use this food it's it's rather easy to make the the, the most expensive is assumptions rabbit but uh having 40 const uh you know it's really good because i already have the 300 intellect and the 50 decks now a lot of people are like man what will you go 50 decks when you when you put that in cons and have a lot more more health right like i said before i'm a crit mage i have crits everywhere and i really want that five percent crit crit rate it's it is it is it worth it you know putting 50 45 percent to be uh, 45 points to be precise into decks just to get the five percent extra crit rate in my opinion it is because like i said i do a lot of crits and that is my stuff and uh, and and I have a lot of crit damage and a lot of crit rate, so why don't I want that extra 5% crit rate? Uh, and the only thing that I'm trading off, it'll be, yeah, it'll be a, a little bit more health, but thanks to the food, I'm able to get uh, to that, you know, desired health and uh, get past uh, 10,000 health easily uh, with, this, uh, with this food buff. Uh, you could also go, uh, you know, with a more tankier approach, but it seems like it doesn't work. I would say the minimum constitution uh, for a mage, it's it's 100, and 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 the max constitution that you want, it's probably 150. Anything past that, it's welcome, but you don't want to take away too much of your damage. If you don't have your intellect on close to 300, 290, you're gonna be losing a lot of damage. And as a mage, that's your job. Your job is to do as much damage as you as you possibly can, right? Um, so i think by far this is the most offensive and defensive stat distribution that you can go with i have gone other i, I went you know full cons i'm pretty sure that everybody at one point has done that and you you surely feel more tankier but you feel like you cannot kill anyone sorry you said the same thing and i agree with him 100 percent man you feel like you do no damage if you don't have all of that intellect um uh, if you don't have uh, the Sumptuous Rabbit, there's another food that you can use uh, that is very good. And that one will be the fried rice. And that one is extremely, extremely cheap to make. The most expensive uh, thing on this one, I think, are the herbs. And, and those, you know, the condiments. And those you get in farming yourself, you can go ahead and buy it out of the marketplace. And you need pork belly for this one. This will give you uh, 24 intelligence and, and, I mean, 24 cons and 16 intelligence. The reason I, I don't use this one anymore is because I didn't like to be below 300 intellect because of the food, you know? Having a food uh, dictate the full potential of your build, I, I didn't like that. I didn't, I didn't like that idea and that's why I have 50 decks so I never miss the 5% crit and that's why I have 300 intellect so I never miss the extra damage. I mean, you could go below uh, 300 intellect, it's not that big of an issue. But I like 300 intellect for some reason. It feels like it deals great. Uh, it feels great. And also, you know, it has that 10% uh, reduced ace of uh, teleportation when you go from one place to another. Um, that, that covers the stats. Um, and that covered the gems as well. I covered the skill tree. I covered, I think I pretty much covered, you know, the rest of the thing. Now, the only thing that is left is how to put this into effect, how to play like this, right? um before i do that i want to show you some little tricks uh you know as a as a mage that you you might want and and, and probably use in the battlefield that probably you didn't know everybody that you know uses this thing they put it down like that the the, the rain and then they play around it right it's great it's amazing 
But the problem that I have with that is that it has such a small range in front of you that anybody from the side or behind you can relatively get you rather quickly, you know? And, and if you're already gonna use that ability, why not use it to its full potential? Now, I sometimes and a lot of times use it just as it is because, uh, you know, it depends on the scenario. But if you have a bunch of melees around you or you're just trying to get away of a situation, what you wanna do is just wanna, oops, I'm, excuse me, I didn't do that correctly, I hit the mouse. Uh, uh, what you wanna do is you just wanna, uh, you know, flick the mouse to the left or right as you're using that ability. Um, <clears throat> if you have a decent enough uh, uh, sensitivity, you can do it rather easy, no problem whatsoever, unless you hit something on your, on your desk just like I did. Uh, so I'm gonna show you here. You come and you can put it like that. You see now it has more of an arch and you can play with it. You can even make a circle around you and, and you can just put one in front of you and four behind you. It's really how how you play how you play this class and 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 the more hours you put into it, the, the better you get with it and the more you know the more reliable your skills would be. The next one, like I said before, it will be ice spike. Uh, initially ice spike will be about this distance. If I use it here, as you can see, you know, it hit the, the target over there. But if the target is right here and I want to use it because the target is right in front of me and not only I want to kill him, but maybe I want to get off of me, you just, you know, uh, like that. The ice spike didn't come out, but you saw all of the damage that was there, all, you know, several thousands. And that's how the other way to use ice spike like that in front of you. And you can always stop it halfway through at the end, you know, at the beginning, it doesn't matter. And, and the more you play with that one, the more you're going to start getting a, a good feeling about that one. Also, uh, the other one is uh, you can dodge uh, halfway through the animation of Pillar of Fire. And uh, you don't have to sit there, you know, through the entire animation. Otherwise, it will be this long. You see, you have to finish the full animation. But if, uh, if you dodge before the Pillar of Fire uh, <clears throat> finishes, you, 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 uh, you cut it halfway through just like that. Um... I think that's it, you know, for, for the little tricks. Is that there's not that many for, for Fire Staff Ice Gauntlet. Um, here is what I wanted to show you guys. Why is it that refreshing Pillar of Fire? It's so freaking good. Uh, here you have two targets. Remember that Pillar of Fire can hit up to three targets to reduce the cooldown. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it here. And as you can see, it went down dramatically faster. Uh, and if you're hitting three targets, or two, all you have to do is maybe just one basic attack and it will be back up as you can see, you see? And it's extremely reliable, extremely fast. Nothing can compete with this damage. If you don't want to do a heavy attack, all you can dodge, all you can do is dodge. You're already, you know, getting the 15% the in increased damage from, from the gems, right? Um, so you can dodge, heavy attack, pillar of fire, dodge, heavy attack, fireball, you know, another pillar of fire. And as you can see, my damage never stops, guys. And if you're in a war, if you're in an OPR, if you're in the ramparts and you're able to free cast for, I don't know, a, a, as little as five seconds, you will do an immense amount of damage and nobody will be able to compete against that. Uh, that is the way that I've been consistently keeping myself on the top of the damage on every single war, basically since the game came out. And, and you know, uh, how was, it's not as good for 1v1 scenarios because 1v1 scenarios, you basically never gonna hit Pillar of Fire. Uh, but for group AOE guys, it is mandatory. You can pretty much get rid of everything. And as long as you have refreshing Pillar of Fire for group activity, that is all you need, right? Uh, I will show you guys some clips on how that works in Wars and in OPRs and it works wonder. Um, the next thing that I wanted to show you guys, it's uh, the main rotation as a Fire Mage. I know everything is situational and not everything goes how you wanted it to go. But <clears throat> if you more or less uh, get a rotation going, because it's not like, wow, you know, like you're going to get stunned or the guy is going to use an uh, 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 anti-magic uh, shell. And, you know, you're not going to be able to hit him with the magics. Uh, so I have a basic rotation that I like to use at the beginning of every duel. If the person is a range class or, if you know, if it lets me. And even for PvE, I most of the time use this rotation. And this will be uh, the beginning of fight. You will start with a pillar of fire, dodge, heavy attack, fireball, dodge, heavy attack, and pillar of fire if you were able to hit that one target. By just hitting one target, right, my pillar of fire will go down to four seconds. My staff just broke. Give me a second. Let me repair that real quick. So, <clears throat> oh, 
Um, and that is because all of that cooldown reduction that I have. If I didn't have any cooldown reduction, right? Pillar of Fire has by default like a 15 or 12 second cooldown. Um, if I go here to Fire Staff. Uh, so it shows there is 8.3 because that is already with the modifiers of my cooldown reduction. I think it's about 12 per, uh, 12 seconds. Uh, <clears throat> so thanks to all of that cooldown reduction, I have it on 8.3 and the same thing with a fireball and a 12.5. That is really, really quick. And it, it says 12.5, but it really isn't, you know, because every time you hit one of those heavy attacks, look how fast that fireball goes down. I can already have it and cover a bigot area, like I was, you know, saying before with my fireballs uh, at Scorcher. Um, so that's why cooldown reduction is so good. It is so freaking good because even if I, I miss an ability, boom, it's right there on already a, a six, seven second cooldown. And, and that goes, you know, that goes without saying for any of my of my fire uh, my fires and, and ice abilities. Having cooldown reduction for a ability spamming class, that is king. That is the way to go. Um, <clears throat> I think I covered everything uh, for the most part. I'm going to go ahead now and show you guys those clips uh, of uh, OPR and war. Definitely three, uh, potential four. Damn, they come in fast. All right, kill one, two, and three. There's a guy up top, bottom top. I need heavy range. left side mid. I need range to deal with those cannons. Don't, don't group up too much. Check, check for barrels on the left and right door. They're all front right now. They are all front right now. Get those walls down. Walls first. Left, rest later. Left door is setting up barrels. Right. Yeah, 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 coming in. You, you can shoot the barrels if they're up there. Shoot the Respawn. All right, AOE now. Big AOE choke now. now. AOE choke. They're desperate. They're desperate. AOE the whole point. They're suiciding. They're, they're suiciding. Yep. Good job. Good job. Nice. Nice. Oh yeah. Good job, oh, everyone. Those calls. Keep going. Finish up, finish it up. Last job. Clear the point, clear the point. Well done, everybody. Good job. Thank you very much. 